Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework Development um, tutorial series. Uh, it is now April 2022, um, so word of a warning, of course, uh, there might be some adjustments uh, related on the steps which we are doing in the series, but please always double check uh, the actual written tutorial, which is always kept up to date. These videos are not always quite up to date because they're not getting updated in as often as we release new versions of SharePoint Framework. Now, in this first tutorial, we can actually connect to the tenant or we will get a tenant, which we will use for development purposes, and then we'll adjust that tenant to be based on the requirements with, uh, for SharePoint Framework and development, which is quite, quite, quite easy. So what we need to basically do is make sure that we have a app catalog, access app catalog in the tenant, um, and that's mainly for deployment purposes. You could technically do development even without the app catalog, but as we then want to actually get the code and put it running in a tenant without the local development experience, uh, we want to have that app catalog graph available. Now, let's actually jump into it. So, let's actually get moving. And first of all, I'm kind of a mimicking situation that this would be my primary computer. So I do have my profile in my in the edge. Uh, and in my case, in this case, it would be kind of a connecting to the default company assets and all of that. And you don't want to mix that together with your development tenant. So first of all, what we always, always recommend people to do is using the profiles uh, in the uh, browser. So it doesn't matter if you're using a Firefox Chrome or Edge Chromium, and you can take advantage of these things as well. So first of all, what we want to do is add a new profile. This is a really, really good thing of isolating your development identity and development profile and development tenant uh, to this experience. Now, Let's close up the other uh, side on there and let me actually go in here. Let me do a small adjustments on the profile settings um, where we can set a nice picture uh, on the on the profile so we can easily identify that. And let's call this my dev environment. Okay, that's not nothing more than a browser profile for now. So where do we actually get our tenant uh, for development? Well, the easiest way to do that uh, is to register to Microsoft 365 developer uh, program. And our developer program basically gives you, uh, well, not basically, it does give you a free Microsoft 365 E5 tenant with 25 accounts. Um, and it renews automatically in every 90 days, uh, as long as you use it uh, for development purposes. So there's a certain level of in instrumentation in place which will detect that, oh, you are actually using this for developer uses it, so it will automatically renew. Uh, all of this is in place just in case that nobody would be using the developer tenant for production usage because that would be, again, break, uh, breaking the license agreements and all of that. And we, of course, don't want that to happen. So how do I get the tenant uh, is, uh, is to register in this program, or you might sign up for a trial tenant, but uh, every single developer can have their own free tenant using this program. It's the, definitely the most easiest way to do things. Now that you have then signed into the tenant, now that you have the tenant, Let's move forward from that moment forward, uh, from that position forward. So I already registered. I have my tenant available, and I'm actually going to go admin.microsoft.com. So that's a relatively simple uh, URL to member, admin.microsoft.com. And then it's going to ask me to sign in. In my case, because again, we are playing with profile, I'm going to say that no, 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 no. I don't want to use my work profile. I want to sign in using that isolated profile and isolated profile uh, information. And I'm going to actually use my administrative uh, identity. So let's actually sign into my tenant. There we go. And I'm going to copy the password here and I'm going to paste in the password in here. And then we are signed in. So, and again, dear Edge, no, I don't want to mix and match. I want to have this profile as a separate profile and, and I want to stay in. So the next time when I actually go to the admin.microsoft.com, uh, it will actually redirect me directly to the Microsoft 365 admin UX. That's a relatively simple thing to remember. Now, what we wanted to do uh, is that then we create the app catalog within this tenant. So we make sure that the app catalog is available so that whenever we are ready to get deployment and the, the application to deployed, we can take advantage of that. So where do we actually get the SharePoint app catalog to be available? We go to show all. Actually, a bit increase the font. Here we go. We go to the admin UX in show all. We can then see the SharePoint in here. 
and I'm clicking that one and it will redirect me into the SharePoint admin tooling and admin portal, admin center apparently is the right name. And in here, uh, I'm gonna click more features and then I can see the apps uh, selection in here. I'm gonna click open. And if the app catalog isn't available at this moment, it's gonna create the app catalog to this tenant. Uh, if the app catalog is already created in this tenant, um, if you're using an existing tenant, you will be redirected to the app catalog. And we're gonna have this nice new uh, modern UI experience, uh, which was recently updated uh, in April, 2022. So this doesn't actually take too long. It's going to create a site collection. It's going to do adjustments, adjustments in there. It's going to set the settings uh, in the right way for that site collection. Few minutes, not a big wait time, but let's speed up the video as needed and do the moment when the app catalog is uh, properly provisioned. And there we go. Now we have the app catalog available and there's a nice reminder or saying that welcome to the new apps experience. As I said, this was relatively, as I'm recording this video in April, 2022, and this new experience was just rolling out uh, on all of the tenants. So that's a pretty cool mo uh, modified experience. So now we have the app catalog and then we need to create ourselves a site collection where we wanna do the development. And this site collection is should be, you can potentially uh, use the, the same tenant for multiple developers to, for development users, usage, and then we are doing development locally and then have an isolated site collections. But when we're deploying stuff, then that might, might actually get a bit tricky. Now, what we wanna do here now, uh, is that we create the site collection. Um, which will use as the context, as the as the uh, location, which we use to access the online workbench, and and then we access the context of that site. So probably the easiest way now to create the site collection uh, is by going to the admin center and and start creation from there. So I'm going to actually go to the admin center because I had it open still in the tab, and then I'm going to turn to the active sites. And then I'm going to actually create a new site collection. This then opens up the site collection creation experience. Um, and it, then it's up to the selection. Do we want to select the team site or a communication site? They're pretty close. Actually, you can make the team site to look like a communication site, communication site look like a team site. There are certain pre-configurations in them. Um, in our case, let's actually create a team site. And let's call this team site as a div. Uh, so it will be then in the address of your tenant URL slash slide site slash dev. So we can easily find that. Um, and you need to provide yourself uh, or the, the owner of the site collection there. Um, and in my case, I'm gonna select the administrator, which is the identity which I'm using now in my tenant. And of course you would be doing the same in your developer tenant. Let's create the site collection. That's not gonna take too long. Uh, nowadays, this actually used to take more than 10 to 15 minutes to create a site collection. Uh, many, many years ago. So it's great to see how fast things are now working nowadays in the in the cloud. So there we go, the dev site, site collection has been created. And if I click that one, I will be now redirected to the dev site collection. And this is basically now then the location, which we can use for developer purposes. We're not gonna now apply anything uh, in the site because we are getting uh, pretty much ready to go. Now, the only thing what we have on the tutorial uh, also is this really kind of a first time to see our developer uh, online workbench. So now if you go to the, oops, if you go to the URL and you say uh, slash underscore layout slash workbench dot ASBX. And if I request that one, we can actually see our online workbench. And this is really the location which we will be using then for development purposes, but Let's start doing that uh, within the next tutorial. Thank you for this. Thank you for watching this one.